on fire communications. This is Casey. I've got a fire out of control. Okay, where's the fire at? Between our ground and Hellendale. I can show you this call. This is the heritage fire that was from yesterday. What's on fire? It, it, uh, the whole field is on fire. When people call, we have standard operating procedure and these are questions that we will ask. What's the phone number you're calling from? And it's the field and tree at this address or is it away from this address? That's this address. Because we're in here and we're not out there, we're so dependent upon what we're hearing them say. That's the biggest thing that I would love for people to know. Just trust your 911 operator. Let us guide the call. Is he away? What medications are you taking? We know what we need from you. We don't want to freak you out. We just want to get your address, your phone number, and listen to what we ask you. We're going to be very specific because we have to know so much stuff before we can send a response. And there is a big responsibility. If I'm the one taking the phone call, I'm the only connection they have to get to you because it's 911, it's life and death. Everybody in here has taken a call that they can relate to, and even though it's not your family, you're like the last person that this family went through this with. I had a call last week, and she was 18. She was, oh, it was early in the morning, it was like first thing in the morning. She got up, saw that her mom's car was in the driveway, she knew her mom had been sick, she went into the bedroom and she found her mom passed away. And um, so yeah, and it's basically you're staying on the phone with this person who is, she can't do anything, her mom, there was no instructions that we can give and it's just basically staying on the phone with this girl until the crew gets there so they can be there in person. I think everybody at some point has gotten off the phone and be like, I gotta take a walk. You've seen all the bad stuff, you've heard all the bad stuff. It's so hard to explain being on this phone call with people who think they're having the worst moment of their life. But we are trained to see if there is something that we can help you do before they get there. We've had CPR saves. The field now will call us and say, we had pulses back, we had respirations back. That only happened because you got that person on scene doing compressions as quickly as you did. Give me just one second, you guys, I'm sorry. Phase one, phase one, go phase one. Like right now, everybody's on the phone. We've got another phone call coming in. So every type of call, from a medical aid to a fire to an investigation of an alarm going off at a building, it matters what these reports are. Our computer-aided dispatch, which is this, which is what every dispatch center uses, it helps you to track all your calls and your units. We're what you call the OA, we're the operational area coordinator for all of San Bernardino County. And most people don't realize that San Bernardino County, it is the largest land mass county in the country. We enter the call and we can say recommend a response and then it will go and it will see who's the closest and then we send them, especially when you've got a working incident like the Heritage Fire and you've got people all over the place, you're kind of drawn down on what you have available. So we need to rearrange coverage so that way no one's left without some kind of emergency unit. We're all basically backing each other up. It's a lot of, I mean, it's a lot of stuff, yeah. You've got to care about what it is that you're doing. It's not just a job. I'm Vanessa Meyer. I'm a supervising dispatcher with Confire and I am proud to serve you.